Hi everybody, and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Monday. I hope your guys' work week started amazing. I haven't said it yet, but can you believe that it is August already? August 4th, right? Yeah, August 5th. August 5th, oh my goodness. This year is flying by. I hope your guys' Monday was fantastic. I hope your weekend was full of reading and relaxation, however you needed to get that done. I am actually home for seven days or more, actually. I do have a day trip tomorrow to LA and back, but I will sleep in my own bed for over seven days, which never happens and is super duper exciting. This is one of my favorite videos that I do every month, and this is where I celebrate books that are coming out in the, that month. So this is my happy book birthday, August 2019 edition. I cannot wait to share these books with you guys. So come on, let's take a look. So, as I always say, these are the books that have been sent to me by publishers that are coming out in the month of August 2019. In no way are these all of the books that are coming out. There would be no way for me to get all of them. Some of them I'm going to be going and purchasing myself because you know how much I love to do some book shopping. And um, so these are just a lot of really amazing, great titles that I want to get onto your guys' TBRs, get you ordered, and get them read by you and read by me. Let's get started. Now, as always, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep control of your TBR. And if you are so able, please order these books from your local pendant bookstores. Let authors know that you're excited about their titles. Let publishers know the titles that you are excited about. Or if you are a library reader, have your library pre-order them for you so that you can go ahead and get them as soon as they come out. That being said, I'm actually going to start with a book that came out the, in last month, July 30th of 2019. And that's because it came to me late and I was not able to put it in my July book birthday video. And that is Mary Lou is Everywhere by Sarah Elaine Smith. This is out from Riverhead Books. I want to thank Riverhead very, very much for sending me this beautiful finished copy. This is the story of 14-year-old Cindy. She and her two brothers live sort of a tough life with their mother. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of difficult times that they're dealing with. And she's really taken a role to protect her brothers and uh, really make sort of the household work when one day a, a young woman from the more affluent side of town a very wealthy young girl goes missing and Cindy sort of slides her way into that girl's life and she's introduced to a whole different way of looking at the world different opportunities and really she starts to feel like paternal love family love and the ability to do those things that you are craving to do in life and that sort of causes for her to have this question i like the way that it says it in the blurb it says um in her borrowed life cindy experiences overwhelming maternal love for the first time and in the process must reckon with her own deceits, learning what it means to be a daughter, a sister, and a neighbor. I actually think this is really cool. Sounds great. And I love sort of the time stamped <laughs> phone on the cover so much. So this is Mary Lou is Everywhere by Sarah Elaine Smith. And this is actually out now. It came out in July. You guys can get your hands on it. I think it sounds like a really great end of the summer read. Okay, so now we're on to August 6th. So that's tomorrow, if you can believe that. I have a small stack of books. One of them I've talked about quite a bit, so I will tell you about it one more time. And that is Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton. This is out from Grand Central Publishing. Gotta thank Grand Central Publishing for sending me this beautiful, beautiful finished copy. I already said in my last video where I highlighted this book, I'm in love with this octopus here. This is the story of the point of the, it's a zombie story from the point of the view of animals and pets. Um, our main sort of narrator is a raven named Shit Turd, goes by ST for short. Sorry, bleep that out if you are under the age of 18. Um, but we get different perspectives on a zombie apocalypse from the point of view of the animals inside their brains. I have read about a quarter of this, maybe a little bit more 
loving it. It just, it has such a great, fun, different take on the zombie narrative. And I think this is going to be a lot of books, that, a lot of people's sort of fun summer read. I'm really, really enjoying it. So that is Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton. And this comes out on August 6th from Grand Central Publishing. I want to thank them so much for sending me this beautiful copy. It's so pretty. The next book I want to tell you about is All the Water in the World by Karen Rainey. This is coming out from Scrib Nurse. We're still on August 6th, guys. This is a story of Maddie. She's 16. She has a life of, with a lot of really good stuff in it. She has a great relationship with her mother most of the time. You know how that goes. She has a great relationship with her grandparents and also her friend group. But Maddie suffers from cancer and she is dealing with that. And so this is one of those books where you have this young woman's life interrupted by this disease. Um, and I think the way it says that this is a story of a family doing its best when faced with the worst. All of those books, I bet you're going to cry. I bet, I have a feeling that this is going to be a tearjerker. So that's All the Water in the World by Karen Rainey. This is out from Scribner. Remember, we are still on August 6th. The next book, you guys are going to notice, I've actually started a lot of these books and I need to just sit down and finish them. This is uh, one of those that I've started, and that is The Women of the Copper Country by Mary Doria Russell. This is out from Atria Books on August 6th as well. This takes place in July 1913, where a young woman decides to finally stand up to the people who run the copper mines in central Michigan? Yeah, I think it's Cal uh, Calumet. Michigan. So men, women risking their lives doing this dangerous work and this is about sort of standing up against the people who own them for their own safety and for what they should be owed uh, for uh, the work that they do. Um, if you have never read a Mary Doria Russell book before, you are in for a treat. But she is an archaeologist, I think, archaeologist by trade. So she is very much into the detail and the history. There's a lot of research in this book, a lot of detail about the time period and the people and the way they live. If you love that, you will love this type of book. You will actually probably love everything Mary Doria Russell has written um, because she is definitely one of those people that puts the effort and the time into her research, and you can tell it on the page. So that's The Women of the Copper Country by Mary Doria Russell, and this is the last book I have that comes out on August 6th. Okay, so we're on to August 13th, and in this stack right here, I've read a few of them and a few of them I haven't read, so that's exciting. I just started, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I just started reading Inland by Taya Obright. Now, Taya Obright, oh, I gotta say, this is coming out from Random House and is one of my most anticipated reads of 2019, and that's because I loved The Tiger's Wife by Taya Obright that came out I want to say nine years ago now, maybe eight years ago. Um, it won the Orange Prize uh, for Women's Fiction. It was her debut novel, and this is her follow-up. This takes place in Arizona just at the turn, at the end of the 1800s. We really have two characters. We have, let me see if I can get her name real quick. Nora is a wife and mother living in the Arizona Territory where it is difficult. Water is hard to come by. Her husband left some time ago to get water and hasn't returned. Her two son, older sons disappeared and she doesn't know exactly where they're at. And her young son needs special help to get through life. Um, he was in an accident. I just actually read that part. No spoilers. Um, and then we also have um, Lurie, Lurie, L-U-R-I-E, who is sort of a guy who has a checkered past and is really trying. I love the little blurb in here. It says, a man searching for a home he cannot find. He has sort of a criminal past and he's trying to sort of reinvent himself. Um, and uh, these two worlds collide. Can Nora trust Lori? Can Lori become a different type of person? Um, I started this yesterday. She is an amazing writer. I cannot wait to utterly devour this. She is very descriptive and flowered language and just beautiful, beautiful writing. Um, this is what the cover is going to look like. And that's Inland by Taya Obright. I got this at Book Expo America. This is coming out from Random House. And again, we are on August 13th. One book I have talked about 
ad nauseum because it probably is my favorite read so far of 2019, is The Memory Police by Yoka Agawa, translated from the Japanese by Stephen Schneider. This is out from Pantheon Books, and I adored this book. I'm not going to say a whole bunch about it because if you watched enough of my videos, you know that I think this book is freaking brilliant. It's a story of an island where objects start to disappear and they are taken out of the collective consciousness and destroyed by the populace. And it's about a woman who tr has to protect a man who doesn't forget the objects like everyone else. And really an investigation into that whole idea. It is brilliant. And so that's The Memory Police by Yoka Agawa. This is out from Pantheon Books on August 13th. Please get your hands on it. Trust me, you will not regret it. Okay, the next book I haven't read and I don't know a ton about, but it was very, very uh, popular at Book Expo America, and that is Lisa Lutz's The Swallows. This is out from Ballantine Books, and I'm going to read you the back just because I don't know this one as well. So it says, when Alex Witt joins the faculty of Stonebridge Academy, she is hoping to put a pain painful past behind her. Then one of her creative writing assignments generates some disturbing responses from her students. Before long, Alex is immersed in an investigation of the students atop the social schools, the school's social hierarchy and their connection to something called the dark room. She soon inspires the girls who've started to question the school's boys will be boys attitude to incite a resistance. But just as the movement is gaining momentum, Alex attracts the attention of an unknown enemy who knows a little bit too much about her and what brought her to Stonebridge in the first place. I actually think that sounds pretty good. Um, so that is Lisa Lutz's The Swallows. This is out August 13th from Ballantine Books. Last but not least, you are going to hear about this in my next read and reviewed video because I just read this, and that is Gods with a Little G by Tupelo Hussman. This is out from FSG, again, August 13th, and this book is phenomenal. Um, Tupelo Hussman wrote The Girl Child, which I have talked about on my channel before, and it was her debut novel, and I met her for that book, and it was great. This book is even better. This is a coming-of-age tale of a young girl who lives in a tiny town that has sort of sectioned itself off from the rest of the world and is led sort of by a very religious-centered group, sort of a born-again Christian uh, group that sort of has taken the town and moved it a little bit... A stops it from moving forward and has a lot of fear and trepidation about things that are different from them, the norm. And the young woman in this book has lost her mother. Her mother has passed away and she is searching really for to reconnect with her father. She has a group of friends that is very interesting. It's a weird dynamic. And there's a lot of just sort of that lost young woman searching for who she wants to be um, and the relationship she gets into because of that. I loved this book. Now, it does stylistically, she does it in short little chapters, sort of a punch every every so often. Um, so, so good. It may take you a minute to get into the style because it is different, but once you're bought in, you will fly through this book. It is so, so good. I can't, I will review it in more detail, but this is Gods with a Little G by Tupelo Hossman. This is out on August 13th, 2019. FSG, thank you so much for sending me this. I am so happy I've read this book. Okay, we are on to August 20th. So two more weekend, weeks left in the, uh, the year. Oh, this pile. August 20th has quite a few books coming out. So sorry about that. One book that I am about um, a quarter of the way halfway through is the short story collection, The World Doesn't Require You by Rion Amilcar Scott. This is coming out from Liverlight. I actually met him at... Uh, Book Expo America, I believe, I'm not yet, he signed my copy, so that's exciting. This is a short story collection in a sort of fictional town that um, he has created in Maryland, a community that is sort of off offset from sort of a bustling major metropolis, and he has sort of created all of these characters, a very vast, vivid characters, a uh, group of African Americans who are dealing with all sorts of different things. Like, it's really hard to explain, but each story sort of tackles a different idea. Faith, fitting in, your place in your own society versus your place in the society around you. Um, he is a phenomenal, phenomenal writer. Now, the, a lot of the stories do have sort of a darker tone, so I am taking this a little bit slower because I'm really finding them very, very immersive. He is, again, as I've said, 
he can write. He can write a sentence. He can write a story. Um, this this book is fantastic, and that's the world that Do the world doesn't require you by Rian Amalcar Scott out August twentieth from Liverlight Publishing. We're gonna do a YA title. I haven't done a YA title in a bit in this uh, in this birthday thing, and that's the Revolution of Bertie Randolph by Brandy Colbert. This was one of the big buzz books at Book Expo America in the YA section. Now, Brandy Colbert wrote a book I read a little while ago called Lion and, oh, what is it? Something in Lion. I apologize. Oh, of course I'm not going to. Little in Lion, which was pretty big actually a little while ago, um, which I, I enjoyed, but I feel like this is going to stick a little bit more to me. So this is about Birdie. She's a young woman who is striving to be the perfect daughter. She um, plays soccer. She's at the top of her class. And then, of course, she falls for a boy that she knows that her parents are not going to approve of. That starts a relationship into her re-examining her life. And then her aunt, who is named Carlene, who has been estranged from the family, just sort of returns to town. And she starts to build a relationship with her. And she has been in and out. The aunt has been in and out of rehab, so has sort of a, a history, a past. And it's really the relationship she has with both this boy and her aunt that sort of create for her a vortex of reanalyzing who she is and who she wants to be. And so that's The Revolution of Bertie Randolph by Brandy Colbert. This is coming out from Little Brown. I have a feeling this is going to be a big YA title this year, you guys. So get a hands on it if you're a YA reader or you have a YA reader in your life. The next book I'm going to tell you about is Machine by Susan Steinberg. This is coming out from Grey Wolf Press. Um, and this is, I'm only going to tell you a bit about this because one, I'm going to say this book is written stylistically very different. So it's going to be one of those fun things that you get to go into and you don't know exactly what the author is doing with her style. And you're going to be learning as you go along. I started this book actually, I'm about a quarter of the way. Are you getting a theme? This is about a group of teenagers that, and some of them are local, some of them are really wealthy, some of them are out of towners, and they're dealing with a young girl's death. She drowned in, in the town that they are in. And really an analy analyzation, the way it puts it, after our local girl drowns, the narrator tries to piece together what happened and struggles to find mooring in the aftermath. And the prose, the, the writing is so good, but it, stylistically you have to start to put the pieces together. So I think it's going to be one of those books that challenges us at a reader in all the good ways. And so that's Machine by Susan Steinberg. Again, this is out from Grey Wolf Press, and we are again on August 20th, just in case. The next book was actually one of the buzz books at Book Expo America for the adults, and that's The Warehouse by Rob Hart. This is coming out from Crown Publishing. This is sort of a sci-fi fantasy book, the story of Paxton, that winds up working for a company called The Cloud. In his world, The Cloud seems sort of like our Amazon is sort of taking over everything. They And when you work for the cloud, you even actually live at their facility. And he never thought he would work there and never understood what it was. And now he's immersed in it. Then we have another character. Her name is Zinnia. And she has sort of gone in as a spy to see what's really going on in the cloud and investigate if they are what they say they are. And she finds and feels she has found an easy mark in Paxton in turning him on the company, the cloud but they don't know what they're going to get into and then it becomes sort of a thriller in that sort of way. Um, I think this is going to be for fans of uh, things like uh, Ready Player One, um, Brilliance. If you've read any of those books, I think this book will be up your alley. So that's The Warehouse by Rob Hart. This is out from Crown Publishing on August 20th, 2019. Okay, sorry, Sticky got caught. Uh, this is a long video. So lots of books to share with you. Hope Farm by Peggy Frew actually came out a while ago. It was longlisted, shortlisted for the 2016 Stella Prize in um, Australia. And it is coming out from Scribe here on August 20th, 2019. This is set in the winter, I think, of 1985. Yes, Hope Farms is sort of this place where our main character and her mother and her mother's new boyfriend go to sort of join a commune, a hippie commune. And I like what it says on the back. It says, at Hope, Silver finds, that's the young woman, an unexpected friendship and at last a place to call home. But it is also here that as just 13, she is thrusted into an unrelenting adult world. 
I love this cover. I think this book sounds super intriguing. I love things on communes. I love that idea of that sort of set aside world where they create their own rules. So that's Hope Farm by Peggy Fru coming out from Scribe. Again, we're still on August 20th. Last but not least on August 20th, I'm going to rearrange. I knocked some books over here. I'm sorry. Is a book I've mentioned a couple times on my channel, and that's Going Dutch by James Gregor. This is out from Simon and Schuster. This is the story of 20 something Richard. He's a young guy. He is currently doing a um, master's or a PhD program where he has really hit a, a, a bump. He is an, unable to write and finish what he needs to do when he meets a woman who he sort of makes an exchange with. He will be her companion if she will help him get through the writing that he needs to do. She lives an opulent life, a life that he is not accustomed to, and it is full of excitement and wonderment. And then he meets Brock Blake, who is a young lawyer who he sort of falls in love with. And then comes the... Um, the sort of the dichotomy, is that the right word? Of these two worlds, the, woman, the man that he's in love with and the woman who sort of rescued him from what he was in and her life of extravagance and really what that means and who is he going to be and how is he going to juggle all of these relationships. Um, I think this book sounds really fun. So that's Going Dutch by James Gregor. This is out from Simon & Schuster. And this is my last August 20th book. Okay, we are on the last Tuesday in the month of August, and that is August 27th. Um, I have three YA and one adult fiction. Let's start with the adult. That's The Golden Wolf by Linnea Hartsuker. This is the third book in the Golden Wolf saga. The first two books you guys may have seen on the shelf, I think their covers are phenomenal. The Half-Drowned King and the Sea Queen. Um, I'm not going to read you the back just in case you haven't read them, and I don't want to spoil anything here that you would learn in those books or anything that gives away. But if you are looking for a sort of a Norway, Denmark, time, uh, what am I thinking? What's the word I'm looking for? Historical saga to just dive into these families, this Nordic sort of um, tale about all of this set on the seas and in those islands and all of that kind of stuff. This series is for you. And so this is the third one. It comes out on August 27th. That's The Golden Wolf by Linnea Hartsuker. Buy book one, buy book two, buy book three. Enjoy it. It's a complete series. You can get through them all if you haven't read them yet. There you go. Okay, let's do some YA. Um, my friend Matthew Sharapa works for a publisher and he handed me this book and this looks like so much fun. I have a feeling that I'm going to be giving this book away to my nephew for Christmas and that's The Misadventures of Nobbin Swill by Lisa Hark Radar. Hark Radar. And this is the story of um, Nobbin Swill. His family works for the king. He works on a dung farm. I was going to say poop farm. Dung farm. It's smelly work, but someone's got to do it. Are you not already sort of smiling already? Um, one day he finds a ring in the pile of dung and it turns out that it has some value and he wonders if it can change his life because he does not want to be a dung farmer forever. So this is a middle grade title. I will say it has some great color photographs in it. This is hilarious. Um, yeah, what is he searching for in this thing of dung? Um, I just think it sounds super fun. So that is The Misadventures of Knob and Swill by Lisa Hark Radar. This is out from Yellow Jacket and again August 27th, 2019. Get it for that YA reader in your life that just likes a little bit of gross. <laughs> a little bit of gross. The next book is actually a fun little graphic novel called Little Witches Magic in Concord. This is actually a retelling retake on Little Women. Um, these are the sisters of Little Women who also happen to be being taught magic. I think that's all you need to know. The drawing is absolutely adorable. Oh, did I say who this was by? Yeah, this is by Lee Dragoon. This is Little Witches by Ma Magic and Concord. And this is published by, I don't, I can't read that name. Oni Press? O-N-I Press. Sorry, I was having a hard time. Um, and yeah, I think this is something that you can read with anyone who enjoys Little Women. And it just sounds like it's going to be a fun, enjoyable little book. And again, so Little Witches, Magic and Conquered, written by Lee Dragoon, out on August 27th from Oni Publishing. Last but not least is probably my, the YA novel, 
that I'm most excited about, one of them, that I'm most excited about coming out in 2019, and that is My Life as an Ice Cream Sandwich by Ibi Zoboy. The boy. And this is coming out from Dutton. Again, we're on August 27th, 2019. I'm going to read the back to you because when I read the back to this, it just gave me all the feels. I love a book about a nerdy young kid. I absolutely do. The summer of 1984. Ebony Grace Norfleet flies from Huntsville, Alabama to Harlem. That's going to be a change. Where she'll stay with her father while her mother deals with the trouble that's arisen for Ebony Grace's grandfather, Jeremiah Norfleet, one of the first black engineers to integrate NASA in the 60s. Ever since she came to live with him when she was little, he's nurtured his granddaughter's love of space and science fiction, especially Star Wars and Star Trek, both of which she's watched a dozen times on Betamax. Connection dozen times. Star Trek was my thing. Love it. Love it. So even as Ebony Grace struggled to make friends, she always had her grandfather in the imaginary worlds they created together. New York, though, is different. Hip-hop, breakdancing, double dutch, graffiti. Harlem is a be bewildering place for a sheltered country girl, and her instinct is to retreat into her imagination. But soon, 126th Street reveals that it has more in common with her beloved outer space adventures than she ever dreamed. And by summer's end, Ebony Grace discovers that broken but beautiful Harlem has a place for a girl whose eyes are always on the stars. I love everything about the sound of this book. I love this cover. Is this cover not absolutely gorgeous. So that is My Life as an Ice Cream Sandwich by Ibby Zaboy, and this is out from Dutton on August 27th, 2019. That is it, guys. That's the last book that I have in this stack. So many books. I am not going to try to hold these all up for you guys. Way too big. Way too many books. As always, if you are a return subscriber to my channel, thank you so much. I could not do this without you. If you are new to my channel, I hope you liked this video and that you come back and you absolutely watch more because I'd like to talk about books and I hope you do too. As always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and I'll talk to you next time. Happy reading. Bye.